Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Stinks Pavilion, still live from the uh, EBS 2014, the European Business Summit. I'm very pleased to welcome uh, to our booth Mr. Pedro Nunes, head of Eureka. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for accepting our interview. So, Mr. Nunes, um, we would like to start asking you to please tell us a few things about Eureka and its scope in promoting innovation and research in Europe. Well, Eureka it is already a long-established organization. It's an intergovernmental organization. It was developed in 86 when uh, President Reagan started the uh, Star Wars, so strategic uh, defense initiative that um, make uh, Europe uh, react by being afraid of a technological divide that could be started because they were putting so much money on their companies to develop new technologies that Europe thought that the only way to react it was to pulling the different national uh, programs and uh, best technologies together in order to be also able of responding to this technology challenge. So this was done and uh, we are uh, next year uh, commemorating our 30th anniversary that will be uh, after the chairmanship of Switzerland passing to Sweden. So we have uh, uh, national shares every year and uh, we will commemorate 30 years of uh, success stories. A lot of uh, projects that were uh, started in Eureka now are big uh, commercial successes. Good, and we wish you good luck with that. Um, how would you judge innovation policy in Europe today? And do you think is, it encourages innovative minds to step forward? Or if not, how does Eureka try to cover the gaps of, in of innovation policy? Well, I think that innovation policy in Europe is a challenge because uh, Europe is very good in developing uh, basic knowledge, so science. We are very strong in science. We are the, considered as the union number one in publication of scientific articles, uh, very good in filling patents, but not so good in transforming all this knowledge in uh, products, processes or services that represent wealth creation and jobs. So this is what is called the uh, European syndrome, or the valley of the dead, and this is what uh, Eureka exactly tried to address. This. So our programs are very much industry-led, bottom-up, that means we are not uh, guessing what type of technologies uh, the promoter should do. We accept any good idea that they will bring to us. We have uh, permanent calls with uh, certain cutoffs twice a year, and uh, like that we think uh, also with the uh, variable geometry, we can accept uh, any proposal with the two partners from two different countries until uh, the 41 or even more, or even beyond. And uh, with uh, such a so flexible approach, very easy to exceed. Uh, without red tape, we can have very short time to contract and to decision. And this is what really for us is the key for a success story in terms of innovation. But I must say that innovation is the only thing that we are lacking in Europe. We lack also other conditions, as I could uh, present in the panel that I participate here on the Business Summit, that are preconditions for competition to exist and to flourish. One, it is low prices of energy. Second, it is a much simpler regulation. We have too much, we have a jungle of regulation without common sense, very much on the, on the uh, political correctness and also we need uh, uh, to have a much uh, more business friendly environment culture from the side of the administration so knowing that uh, the companies that produce jobs produce wealth that will after pay the cost of uh, necessary administration thank you for this insightful answer um, another thing which is very important for us and we are really um, keen to know more about is um, what follows. Last year's creation of a unitary European patent system is already an accomplishment when it comes to innovation in Europe because you know uh, we re there are re very intensive concerns about patent system in Europe. 
However, do you believe this is enough, what, we, what was already done? And how does Eureka try to facilitate access to funding for European innovators? Well, uh, what we do it is, first of all, to have very smooth, good relations with the other entities that are also ensuring funding on different uh, phases of the innovation chain. The innovation chain starts in uh, blue sky research, in uh, fundamental research, in development, and all of that is very well done through the, either the Horizon 2020, so the former framework program for research, or from the different uh, research programs in, at national level. So we have very good relations with them, so trying to pick and to attract the best ideas and the best consortia, the best companies, the best universities, in order to support if they want to, to, to have the jump for the market. So we, if they will have startups or spin-offs or, or new companies, that will try to apply this research to the marketplace. This is where we came and we enter with this uh, uh, large number of tools like uh, the Eurostars program that we are doing with the European Commission for uh, very innovative SMEs or our classical uh, Eureka projects that are very much designed with the national uh, uh, innovation agencies that uh, are in network so with a very easy uh, dialogue between themselves in order to sponsor a concrete project and also with our clusters that are the association of uh, big industry. So when we are speaking about uh, clusters we are speaking much more in big industry than in SMEs. So we have this full array of possibilities that will try to bring this knowledge to the marketplace for the creation of jobs and growth in Europe but also looking for the market growth potential. This is why we are uh, from some years uh, from now, we are trying to expand our network to also have smart allies like South Korea, like uh, Canada, like South Africa and others that will really bring us an added value, either in market impression or in technology or even in capital. You mentioned some um, foreign, some uh far countries. Um, you partially covered um, the following question uh, some minutes ago, but I would like to ask you again on another side. Is Europe is an, if Europe is inno innovative enough compared to the rest of the world, like important markets like the US and China, this is, uh, especially the last name I mentioned, China is very, very important um, competitor in some way, but also uh, and alive for the future, and we are re really interested in China's European thing. So we would like to hear something from you on this side. Oh, well, uh, really, what we are trying uh, with Eureka it is to give the possibility of our members, uh, countries, to resist by uh, pooling their national efforts together to have critical mass to compete with those major economic uh, zones like United States or China or Japan and now we have also other uh, new countries appearing at this, I would say, new class of economy. So these are continent economies. So with a huge internal market, uh, very often with also a very aggressive agenda for technology. And so to, in order to resist, we must be together because now any of our single member has the dimension or the power to compete with uh, China or the United States, not even Germany. So this is why we think that with this aggregation of efforts, we will be able to compete very often to collaborate, but on the same footing with these major uh, new economic realities. By the way, China just overcame the United States in terms of economy dimension. We heard about that and we realized uh, by these figures that the world is changing very fast. And I would like to close this uh, brief interview with a question more personal. Um, we would like to know, we would like to hear from an innovator, an, in, an innovator like you are, Mr. Nunes, how you see Europe in 10 years since the market is changing so fast. Yes, in terms of technological 
development, but also in terms of social and the people's development. Are you optimistic? Well, um, I think that uh, anybody that will be responsible should be should have some level of concern because Europe is, uh, let's say, a uh, whole uh, society. We are getting older. We are not having enough birth. So we are getting older as a society with all the difficulties that this brings. This brings a difficulty not only in terms of renewing our human capital basis, that was uh, our strength, our major strength up to now, but also put in question the sustainability of our social security that is the most generous worldwide. So this can create some stresses in terms of uh, being able to compete, keeping the same level of uh, quality of life with these new players. So I think that if our politicians will be wise enough and uh, our populations will be enough aware, avoiding extremism and populism, they could devise the way to go. The way to go means allowing a certain level of immigration because we need to uh, replace our uh, vanishing workforce because uh, we are becoming old, and that could be by accepting that we, we must receive uh, some uh, level of immigration that should be qualified, and also uh, promote our own human capital even more, uh, giving them uh, probably a not so theoretical but much more applied education uh, in order to be able to cope with the needs of the future. But obviously we need also to uh, see these preconditions for competitiveness. So energy is a fundamental weakness of the European society. We don't have our own uh, natural resources, so we depend from the external world. So we cannot have a uh, high cost energy base. We should have a low cost energy base and for that we must look for smart and uh, intelligent policies in order to overcome that weakness. We should also try to be much more pragmatical in terms of uh, legislation, much more business friendly in order to promote the uh, coming up to Europe that is still, still is a lighthouse in terms of design, in terms of, uh, of uh, fashion. Uh, everybody is uh, using and copying the French design, for instance, the French uh, brands. Uh, so I think this is in the strength part. So everything together with common sense and a wise policy, we will survive and we will survive very well in 10 years' time. If we will persist with the wrong policies, probably we will be no more relevant in the world arena, like yesterday President Bohos was saying on his opening speech. Thank you. Thank you for all of your answers, which are really interesting for us. So that was it, basically. I thank again Mr. Pedro Nunes, uh, head of Eureka, for being with us this afternoon, and I thank you all for the attention. Thanks. Thank you so it was a pleasure. Thank you very much, sir.